Hello everybody. I found a cool new tool online. It's an open source tool, which is called Session Keys. And uh, it can be used to improve the UX of your applications. So, I mean, I really didn't find it. Like someone on Twitter told me, hey, you're making games. Why are you introducing session keys to improve the UX so that you don't need to sign all the time? So what I did, I tried, uh, I, I built a little game around it um, to show you how it works. So this game is called Lumberjack and um, it has an energy which refills over time and it has a wood counter. So what I can do now is I can chop a tree with my phantom wallet. I approve the transaction, my energy decreases by one, and my wood increases by one. But uh, the UX around it is like a bit inconvenient, right? Every time the wallet pops up and I need to click it. And um, so here's where our session keys come in. So I can create a session. What this does, it uh, creates an ephemeral key pair in the browser. And it transfers 0 0.01 sol into it uh, so that it can pay for gas fees. And it also creates a PDA, which saves the authority. And this uh, session uh, can then be used to perform certain actions in our program. So what I can do now is I can just uh, chop trees using the session token. So I don't need to sign with my phantom wallet anymore. So this is, of course, very convenient. You can see the last ones here are failing because I'm out of energy. Um, and now afterwards, like I'm done with my game session, then I can revoke the session and I get the soul back. And now I can still continue signing with my normal uh, wallet, which was now fail because I don't have energy. So uh, now I'm going to show you how this, um, how the code works. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about security um, because uh, the key is saved in the browser. You may already see some problems with that. So let's start in the program. Um, the first thing we do here is in the init player function, we save the authority of this game data account and we set it to the signer. So this would in this case be my phantom wallet. And then down here, we can see if I call the chop tree instruction, we have this uh, session macro here, which has an option called session token. So I can either provide a session token, then I use the session token to sign, or I use uh, my normal key pair, the phantom wallet, and then um, yeah, there would be an additional check which checks this one. The check is happening directly above the instruction. So if I go here to the shop tree instruction, I have this nice other macro here. It's called session out or, and when I provide a session token, then it uh, checks if the PDA that is um, affiliated to this session um, is uh, has the authority, which is the signer, in this case, our session wallet in the browser. And if I don't provide a session token, then it just takes the player authority and looks if that is a signer. So that's, that's what then be my phantom wallet. And yeah, like this, I can just use the local key pair in the browser to sign for this for a certain amount of time. This is very convenient, especially for games or some social media application where you like scroll something and you want to like or so. So you can just start a session and then end it again. And I also built a client for it in uh, React. And here you can see I can very conveniently create a session. I can have different parameters, like the expiry time. Like if this time runs out, then the transactions would fail if I use a session token. And I can also say top up or not. And um, yeah, if I say top up, then a little bit of sol is transferred into this uh, ephemeral key pair. So 0 0.01 sol. And here you can already see this might be a problem because the browser isn't a safe place, right? There could be cross-site scripting attacks. There could be a malicious extension on the player's uh, browser. So you cannot be 100% sure that no one gets a hold of this key or injects some code to do something with it. But you can always revoke these sessions. So everyone can just revoke the session and then the players couldn't do anything with it anymore. And it's kind of similar to how Web2 tokens work, actually. Um, I will show, show you later the documentation that Gum wrote about this. And you can also not top up the wallet. Then there wouldn't be any sol in the wallet. And uh, you could use some gasless solution, like, for example, having an octane relay, which somehow pays for it or so. But for the game, I think, uh, like for, for me, the UX is, uh, is really nice. As you can see, like you can start a session, then you can play a bit and afterwards you close the session again. And then, um, here you have different uh, options. Like, for example, if I don't set a session key, then I would just set the signer to my phantom wallet. Um, could be any other wallet, of course, Soulflare, Backpack or whatever. 
And if I provide the session token, then I would just put in the session token here that we got from create session. And then I would put as a signer the session wallet. And the session wallet, you can just get via a hook the same as uh, any other wallet um, using the wallet uh, adapter. And yeah, if you want to uh, read a bit more about the security behind it, um, the documentation of GUM is quite nice. Here they explain everything, how the user creates the um, PDA, and then it's validated in the program, how they securely save the, uh, how they encrypt the key that they save in the index DB, and yeah, some explanations. So it's not audited yet, but uh, I, have, I think the team will improve on it, and uh, I think it's a very nice um, thing to have open source. Um, everyone can try it out. Um, I put the links to this example project and to the GAM documentation in the comments. And yeah, thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye bye.